Hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Submitted for Your Approval, our weekly card review show for the collective community card game where you make the cards. I am joined today, as always, by my faithful co-host, Grief. Howdy, folks. Got our regular panelist, uh, Empty Folder. Hi, everyone. And today we are joined by Super Sun. Super Sun's uh, kind of a newer player like me. Uh, you probably know them from the a lot of the art from uh, places like Karchar and more recently since we also stuff. Hi. Hello. There we go. <laughs> Okie dokie then. So I just wanted to hop straight into it. First, uh, and I am so excited about this card, and then everyone decided to nerf it, and now I'm sad. I, I'm not sure excited is the right word, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I don't care if you're excited. No. Vigorous Maw is a three-drop Spirit 3-1 three, Dragon Undead from nowhere in particular with, before combat, you control at least two Undead, put this from your graveyard to play, and Entrance Duel a unit. And before we even talk about this, we have to the update that's already on the sub. So what this card really is, is a 2-1 with before combat, if you control at least three undead, put this from your graveyard to play because the update has so many upvotes it's gonna get in. So tell me how good this card is and why this update needed to happen, Grief, because I'm sad. Because it was made to make you sad. No, a joke <laughs> aside. Um, we're looking at, uh, okay, for, uh, for context, we have a card in the game that is called Undying Brood, which is a two cost, two one that cannot block, that basically has the same trigger ability like two, uh, two undead units in play to put it into play before combat. But instead of dual unit, it has this attacks. Yeah, it, this attacks. Yeah. Well, it is put into play attacking before combat, which is nice, but it cannot block, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, this thing has a pouncer ability on an entrance, meaning that it duels anything basically the moment it enters play. So you don't even have to cast it. And on top of that, well, if it kills itself, it just uh, is put into the, uh, it's put into the graveyard. By the way, this thing has current, uh, currently has the same stat line as it's fa uh, one favorite uh, silly little goblin card in the game that was red and also banned. Uh, nerfed to the ground or partially nerfed to the ground because it's so damn obnoxious. This dude alone can on turn two if you manage to put two units into the graveyard and discard it via a Feroz Matchstick, wipe your, uh, wipe your opponent's board each turn before combat with everything that has three or less HP. Uh, yes, this shitty card had to be nerfed to the ground. <laughs> So yeah, th th this has a lot of cool roles in an undead package. Um, you this is the kind of deck that's going to be running Unliving Belfry, which has the potential to almost create a problem with making it stick. Um, but who cares at that point? You could still... Uh, at that point, it's usually later in the game. So it's still, it's still my die. In the you want to pick something that makes us die every turn, basically. Ideally. If nothing exists and it ends up sticking for one turn, so what? Um, but it's weird that it, it's a it's a it's a unit that in order to be the action that it's supposed to be has to be in the graveyard at all times. <laughs> Empty, what's your thoughts on this? Yes, so this card was so broken that it sparked a debate on this uh, Discord as to whether or not the voting system was working properly because people thought there was no way this could make it into the game with a sane voting system. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so obviously this needs the nerf and I think even with the nerf this will still be an extremely strong card since it's just like basically free value for undead next late game once it's in your graveyard and along with the uh, mill support card which we'll be seeing later uh, I think undeads are <laughs> basically <laughs> going to be back on top of the meta so we'll yeah. see how that shakes out well basically every, every day we talked about this a bit in the pre-show every uh Every deck that was in the meta before had means to deal with this, and now this has a means to fight back a little bit better, right? Yeah. Super, what's your thoughts? I mean, at least from the design of the card, you can't really make stronger brutes. Because, like, for example, if you, like, take Undead Brute, make a 12-mana version with, like, a 9-7, it's clearly broken because you get free nine sevens i mean that's sort of the thing of you can't really take you have to keep it around brute's power level as like a zero mana or a one mana unit 
this is clearly like getting into like two mana, three mana free value, and it's just way too much. And that's why, yeah, it had to just get nuked from orbit. Yeah. And, it, and like I said, it will still, I think, be really strong even with the with the nerf. It will be strong, but not damn broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not fi not fireballs from the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so okay. Of fireballs from the <laughs> so another. Well, we're not at the fireballs <laughs> oh. graveyard yet. Another fun tool <laughs> for, for spirit. Overflowing thoughts is a three drop spirit action from the Genesis. Thither goes my sanity. Both players draw two cards and mill cards. The amount of cards in their hand. So this is a combination of a spilled grail and a milled grail. You got <laughs> a lot. Uh, this is the one that a uh, lunatic did that really cool art time lapse of. Finally got in in some form or another. Um, I like this because I, I'm running the undead package that runs Vigma. Uh, <laughs> uh, we like this, right, guys? We like this. Super Sun, you like this? Um, except for the part where you basically mill your entire deck. Maybe <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating slightly, but. That's no, you aren't. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> well, well, so Mill, in order for Mill to work, it needs one of two things. It needs either a slow, steady, I'm going to hit you for two or three a turn, or it needs a big, flashy thing. This is a big, flashy thing. This is Mill's mind blow, basically. Right? And it's three. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if that's fair on a three-mana draw two already. Yeah. Like, that's already on curve. It's three-mana draw two, and mill your entire deck, getting you all of your brutes and your maws in the graveyard. Yeah. That might be a bit much. <laughs> well, and this Brief. was the nerf version of the card. Yeah, this <laughs> is the nerf version of the card. I know, Lunatic's like, I swear this is balanced. I'm pretty sure you just perjured yourself, Lunatic. <laughs> well, we could have, yeah. So, Grief, why'd you pick this one? What do you want to say about it? The thing is, I love milling and I love self mill. The problem is this card basically writes, oh yeah, for three mana, I'm built 13 cards. Because <laughs> funny enough, oh, you would build 13 cards. Because funny enough, this card is pretty obnoxious. A, and Dralox. B, it helps self mill quite a lot. C, we have a pretty busted undead package currently that's kind of obnoxious and disgusting to play against. Oh yeah, and on turn five, I only have five cards left in my deck. <laughs> yes, this card basically, uh, even Vujak tested, I think he had on turn three only 13 to 12 cards left. Hmm. So yeah, this can go to, uh, this can go to, uh... yeah, let's just say, well, I personally, yeah. I personally am quite, I personally am quite uh, reserved on this card because I personally made Nightmare Carnival. This is better than Nightmare Carnival. It's better than the nerf. Uh, it's better than the pre-nerfed version of Nightmare Carnival. Well, so <laughs> the other interesting thing about this is obviously it has its place in the mill package. I think what's really interesting about this is its place in the Undead Swarm package because undead uh, aggro decks have means to dump their hand, and before their best draw tool was Pilgrimage, basically. Sorry, I probably ma made myself not really that kill. You don't care about the mill part. You, you want to self mill. Yeah. You, you get you to self. Yeah, self but in an aggro deck that has a bunch of really low cost units, you have the means to dump your hands. So you're not. You're hitting a little bit of the mill enough to get you your tools, but you can actually use this to get a drop. So now you have your own meticulous research, your own, and then you can pair this up with like consult the beyond. And um, and probably still running pilgrimage now. Aggro has this really potentially very draw suite, and I like that it, that it has. We're seeing these options in spirit. Personally, I, I, I have a random question, grief. If this card actually had both players draw two, and it was just the mill effect, do you think this would actually still be ran? Wait, what? Sorry. If it, if if it was just a... only milled and not even drew cards, do you think this would still be ran? Um. Probably not at three. Not at three, that's why I was thinking. Like two, it would probably be okay. still be good, I think. I was just kind of curious as a thought. Empty, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I think the main like thing with the card is uh, 
Like it's going to be best against control matches, which is already like Mill's best matchup, because uh, like the slower game time lets you mill their deck out more efficiently. Um, and actually, the one thing that may hold this card back a little bit is that everyone's going to be playing undeads. Well, no. yeah. <laughs> next patch, and uh, this is pretty bad in the mirror match, as you're going to be giving your opponent basically exactly as much value as you're giving yourself. Yeah, everyone is, bad, everyone will be playing. Everyone will be playing three copies of Overflowing Thoughts, Journey to the Dead, and <laughs> at Peace. <laughs> so. Like we may, we at, we may see some Bullock versus Bullock mirror matches deck themselves out on turn three. <laughs> the, the, the best part would be if uh, bullshit oh, factor. Oh god. So th is this a run over consult or a run with consult? You run this over consult or just an addition with co two of consult because this is better than consult. Yeah, you want to okay. Fool your okay. Hand. So consult <laughs> it, consult is a fourth overflowing thoughts. <laughs> Basically if you if yeah. you really need it. <laughs> I run both in my undead swarm deck, but I mostly play single player. The Leyline Watcher, another spirit card. We all decided to talk about spirit cards today. Spoiler alert. Leyline <laughs> a two drop spirit, or sorry, a one drop spirit exclusive zero two artifact from nowhere in particular. At the end of turn, pay two mana, silence this, gain one max mana. This is interesting. Empty, why did you want to talk about this? I just really like the design here. I think it's like an interesting way of doing. Uh mana ramp that your opponent can interact with like if you drop this turn one it may be pretty difficult to stop um but like later in the game when you're dropping these your opponent can be like oh do i want to spend part of my turn trying to remove this or not and it adds this sort of i don't know interesting aspect to it that i like hmm yeah, I, I, I like this card quite a bit, too, because mm. this is a really efficient use of turn one mana. And even if, like, you don't even necessarily have to commit on turn two to pay the extra two, you can use it later. Like, if you are against a more aggressive deck, you can kind of just drop an actual two drop or something if you need to regain tempo. And then this is just sitting there when you have a better time to spend that two mana. But then also, then late game, this is three mana ramp that comes with a body. Like, there was a card in Elder Scrolls Legend. It was basically a, a three-mana 1-1 one, one with ramp, and it was very played. And this is kind of similar in that it will ramp you and also block an attack. And that's a pretty powerful combination, even for three. Yeah. Um, in single player, where the AI is dumb, you could reasonably break the cap with it. Like, because, you know, if you're if you're goofing around and see the last game and you really want to get to 15 for some reason, you could probably do it. Um, Grief, I think you're the only one who hasn't talked yet. Yeah, I, the thing is, I don't really have much to talk about this card, to be honest. It's cute. I'm glad we're having more of these effects in the game, especially unlike Mana Maiden, which can go away. This is permanent. Yeah, well, I think, uh, like, slower control decks, like Dot especially, really need some mana ramp in order to be able to like keep pace with the uh, current problem on our lists. Yeah. So you're saying if we're going to get Dot back on top, we or back in at, at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be happy if he was like tier three. Yeah. <laughs> the Lost Huntsman is a four drop spirit three three specter from Sweatlo. With whenever this enters the graveyard, pay one to deal three damage to a unit. If that kills, return this to your hand. So, Super Sun, why did you want to talk about this today? Oh, it's just part of the undead trifecta that's going to um, invade our game. It, yeah, it's just in combination with overflowing thoughts. It turns overflowing thoughts from three mana draw two, mill ten cards to four mana, draw two, mill ten cards, and do a fireball. <laughs> it, it's just really powerful in discard. Cause you're or if you can hit two of them, it's, it's, you can hit, oh, yeah. you can hit if you, three fireballs off of this if you get really lucky. Mind you, you would need the open mana, so yeah, you, need you need six to. when you did that. Like, you could, there's a chance you could just risk these going to the graveyard if you don't have enough open mana. But in just discard in general one mana fireballs is really powerful i mean it's i kind of made the joke that you don't ever just you ideally don't ever want to just cast this for 
before, so the body size is almost irrelevant since it's just so much stronger being discarded. And if you cast it on the field, it actually gives your opponent a chance to interact with it. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, this this is kind of gross. This, I'm in, is gross. So there you go. Uh, empty folder, anything else? Uh, not really. Super Sun sort of covered it. Free, or one mana fireballs whenever you dump something is uh, pretty strong. Uh, Grief, you got anything? Yeah, I personally like the card, funny enough. Um, <clears throat> because of its flexibility with self-discard, uh, self self-mill, etc. On the other hand, though, it's unlike Vigorous Maw, far cleaner to balance or nerf. Because you just have, you have just two uh, numbers that you can basically play around to tweak. In this case, probably make the payment to two cost, and you have a normal two cost fireball. One nifty little interaction is a five mana combination with um, one uh, with one spook blast, one matchstick, and one or two of those guys. Um, pl uh, play a spook blast for three mana, kill a unit. D uh, act, uh, play a, fer a fierce matchstick to discard a huntsman, pay one mana, hit something for three. If it kills it, it returns to hand, Spook Blast triggers. You can return Spook Blast to hand because the Spectre got it back into your hand. You can play this one and basically nuke the board for nine ma uh, for five mana for nine damage. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and well, and uh, and gain the fireball. And I know on the current week, I actually, uh, there's a Black Rift design that's a discard engine. We can also have uh, ways to re reliably trigger this that are without using any off-affinity cards. Yeah, I mean, out of the undead... Still, probably people don't really like the, uh, Black Rift that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not doing that bad. Well, I don't know. Out of the out of the undead trifecta, this is probably the, mo the more balanced of the three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that assessment, too. Okay, so we're doing this thing. Uh, Sunset Samurai is a one-drop strength... 2-1 Samurai from Yamato. Regenerate, active, pay one mana, gain plus one, plus one until end of turn, and ready this. So, um, what are we thinking about this uh, this thing? I'll let you start, Grief. It's another Samurai. So, sorry, I am a little bit jaded when it comes to Samurais and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah cards so, in general, because they basically look the same. <laughs> so I thought this was, this was actually a little bit interesting because so I was the, my first thought when I looked at this card was, why doesn't this just empty your mana pool out, give it plus X plus or you know plus one plus one for everyone you fed into it, and then that's it for the active, or and then ready this for the active. Because that was be pretty terrible. Like, then I remember Chrome was a thing. That was pr like, that would be pretty terrible. That would be pretty terrible. <laughs> As is, like, it, so I guess what I actually came to this wanting to ask you guys uh, what I'm missing with this. It's doing okay, but um, what tools does Samurai really need right now, and is this one of them, or I don't know. Well, okay. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Super Sun, do you want to go first? You can go ahead if you want. Go ahead. Okay. Well, okay. For one thing, Samurai aren't really a coherent deck. Like, yeah. they have the equipment thing that they're sort of doing on the side, but the rest of it is mostly just random units that have this, happen to have the Samurai Tribe. Uh, yeah. The reason I like this card is because it's a mana sink, which is yeah. something we don't have. Like, pretty much no designs. And the other thing that I really like about it is that it's an initiative sink, too. Like, if your opponent's passing back and forth, you can keep pumping this up, and then when they don't have something to play, you can immediately go to attacks. Like, if you think they're going to board clear, you can just pump man into this thing, like, three times in a row and force them to keep making actions or you go to open attack. It's not something that, like, comes up all that often, especially right now, because aggro is not really a thing. But I really like um, cards that let you mess around with initiative a little bit in order to, like, game out your opponent and force them yeah. to make unideal plays. So, yeah, that's that's interesting for maybe the, the mind game type thing. 
I was mostly wondering what Aiden was thinking because I know Aiden's a really good designer. I was a little bit confused by this design. Uh, Grief, you have any thoughts on it at all? Or as I, as I said, just a samurai. I'm oh. not touching <laughs> samurais with a ten foot pole. Sorry. <laughs> Do you oh, got anything? I didn't even think of initiative pass, and that's juicy. But yeah, like he said, aggro's having aggro. Uh, mana sinks is an extremely powerful concept because when you get later game as an aggro deck there'll be times where you'll get to the point where your hand is near empty and you can't even actually spend all your mana being able to have sources to then sink your mana into especially on a one drop is pretty powerful because like on one drop you just drop this it's a two one that's going attacking but this is actually a one drop that is now actually relevant to later in the game as well and that's one of the biggest weaknesses of one drops is that towards the end of the game, they're just trash. And it's just like, okay, so easy to kill. This is actually a one drop that if like, if you're in a top deck situation, this could actually threaten the opponent still. Mm -hmm. Unlike most other one drops where it's just like, okay, how, you can block my two one, I guess I'm in trouble. Yeah. Thing, is, is, though, interesting. thing is though, how good is this or the semi-decent saturation of the duelists on the board? Not very. Not very. <laughs> it, I have to admit, it's a little no. bit weak. But I but, do still like the design. Yeah, it, it, It's a one drop. I mean, it's not supposed to be game winning. And I mean, it, it is removable. But it is a one drop that actually has relevant late game. But it does come with weaknesses. And yeah, it's that yeah. one HP. <laughs> it's, the, it's an Astral Gauntlet card. <laughs> oh! An, sorry, I want to go back to this. I had another thought about this. Chariot! Yes. Oh, you could run it in chariot. <laughs> wow, oh. that'd actually be dirty in KM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it gets plus one, plus one in duelist. Holy shit! <laughs> no, well, I like, just regenerate if, too. If That's you, sweet. If, if, if you drop a chariot on turn three, they're gonna have a very unpleasant turn four. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean, actually. Yeah, okay, so one thing this definitely can, can potentially bust is an actives matter deck. Yeah. It does stuff off of it being an active, and, okay. That's the final thought. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to go too far into that one. Um, yeah, it, actually, why are you so broken? <laughs> it's, it's, KM is more to blame here, I guess. Uh, the blind hunt oh yeah this was okay so the blind hunter is a two drop strength three two dinosaur from unguia it has got this adorable art from this is like space turtle at space turtle's best this little dude and he's riding on top of this big dude and whenever you attack with exactly one unit this also attacks so the idea with this and correct me if i'm wrong is I'm Helldeem, I want to attack with exactly one unit, and then this comes along for the ride? Pretty much, but I mean, it has a lot of uses even outside of this. Like, in an, aggr in an aggro deck, this might as well read two mana, three, two agile. That's potent, because you'll just attack with your one drop, and then this comes for the ride as long too. It's just, this is a really well-crafted Helldeem aggro card. And we don't have that many of those. <laughs> yeah, so the idea the ideal situation for Helldeem is turn one rock puncher, turn two this. Maybe not rock puncher necessarily, but something along uh, the lines. Know about the rock <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't want your one drop getting killed by Pan Cat and then this just Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean if you really want to stretch it, probably maybe some sheeps, the war sheeps, friend sheeps. Sure they have zero tech, but at least they're good equipment targets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so what else we got going for this? Uh, you picked this, right, Super? Yeah. We talked it's about just, this. It's just well crafted because it gives Heldum a little bit more, more something to attack with if he's trying to gain EXP. And then once it's on the field, you can just manually attack with it yourself after the, like, the turn it's come into play and stuff as well if you need to swing with more, if you're going to yeah. swing with your entire board. It's just, it's just really well designed. Like, I am impressed about the design of this card for Heldum Aggro. It, it's okay. not easy to design cards good for Heldum, and this is really well designed. For and by the way, this is for the, the Aggro DC that was being run by the uh, Card Jam people. You mean AC? I know it's DC. Yeah. <laughs> they said DC, yeah. There's Nitro. Actually, there's oh, actually a, 
there's actually a design competition that we should probably mention. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we have AC, any cards from that? It's all electricity. Yes, I, I, anyway, I put some cards yeah, yeah, yeah. on there from that. So the archetype completionist did this aggro thingy, and then the there's actually a design competition called the underdog design competition. Anthony, what do you have to say about Blind Hunter? I, I'm with uh, Super Sun here. I love this design. I think it's great to like allow Heldem because one of his biggest weaknesses is that like he's mainly in most Heldem decks are aggro decks but you're only attacking with one unit every turn most of the time. So it's hard to get in that early damage to actually pressure mm -hmm. your opponents. And this adds like a ton of pressure and lets you maintain that XP gain that's so important while actually getting in for good damage. And if this is blocked correctly, you should be able to grab multiples of these and have an actual board swinging with Cassiel. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, oh, sorry, this is... On voting, it looks like a simple card, so it may not do as well in voting compared to a lot of other stuff. It's doing okay. But, I mean, just, this is kind of con control bias. This looks, when you see a good aggro card, give it a little bit of love. Give it some spare change. Aggro needs help. <laughs> Green, do you have any closing thoughts on this? It's thankfully more hero support. I like hero support cards. Upvote it, folks. Okay. Now we're getting into the, the non-DC stuff. Starting with Golden Griffin with that stunning Frank Castico art that I all know and love. Um, Golden Griffin is a four drop mine, three two Griffin from nowhere in particular with a nice shiny golden coat. And it has flying agile. And if this deals damage, put one random opponent's unit in play at the top of their deck. So uh, the wording is a little, it's whenever this deals damage, put a random unit, a random enemy unit on top of, uh, of, the, of, on top of, of the, the opponent's deck. deck, is what it says. Yes. Little, little messy, but I thought the effect was super cool. Um, yeah, if your opponent's running Swarm, you're just abducting something random, but who knows? That random thing you're abducting could be their Belfry. The other thing is, this is just a nice, sleek body. It's 3-2 Flying Agile. A little costly, but you get a n nice bonus if this ever hits something. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting some Yada Garasu PTSD flashbacks here with this card. <laughs> are, are you scared of this boy? Why are you scared oh, yeah. of this boy? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm big time scared of this boy. <laughs> Basically, if your opponent drops this... <laughs> and you have no answer in hand, you're draw locked for the rest of the game until you have no board. No. Because it, it, this doesn't even have to attack face. If it just deals damage, your next draw is now something that was on board. Then after that, your next draw is something that was on board. So if you do not have an answer for this at the moment that this comes on the field, you're never going to get one for the rest of the game because you yeah. no longer draw cards. I like a, didn't realize that this actually PTSD. deals damage to anything. That's... Yeah. <laughs> problematic yes. i mean even even if it didn't this is flying with agile <laughs> yeah it's like that's not the easiest thing to block it's just you need it you if you don't have an answer you lose the game pretty much that's i mean it i don't i, I mean it i'm kind of might be overcompensating from Yada Grasu and Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, and the four cost might... this is not Yada. no no it's, 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 <laughs> well, not, well, here, it's definitely okay, not Yada. The, the four random? cost mm -hmm. And you got to remember, this is a game with a preponderance of summon effects. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a lot of decks you could be up against where this could bite you bad. Potential. Well, well even if they have a summon effect, you uh, took away their next draw. Like, this is whenever yeah. it deals damage, negative one your opponent. No. Yeah. Like, there's a big difference between a creature going back to hand to going on top of deck. Ne going on top of deck is actually a negative one in card advantage. Didn't you make a boat swain that does exactly that whenever it hits your opponent, negative one in card advantage? And then at the end, they draw a card. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, grief, go. Super Sun's rambling. I love the card. <laughs> I, I personally am one of the people who actually don't fucking care about friendliness and card games. I mean, I love this <laughs> card. I love stacks. I love tucking shit on top of the deck. Good luck, uh, good luck, Scrub, getting something good out of it. 
I mean, you could shuffle your deck if we actually have such effects. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I love those cards more now because we don't have the traded card advantage while drafting anymore. And this does pretty uh, jack shit little against KM because she can actually scout for potential answers. Um, on top of that, sure, this will get hit, uh, this will hit you once at least, at best twice. But for the most part, um, we have quite a hostile, we have quite a hostile environment that even the units it will be talking back are more or less more uh, screwing you over than uh, the otherwise, especially if they're uh, early game units. In addition to that, think of uh, think of cards like to uh, token creations, which basically meant you just talk to a token that was marginally okay. And they still have the rest of the board. It's heavily variance based, so yeah. In the end of the day, this is probably one of the most push versions of such an quote unquote aggressive uh, controlled unit without being actually broken and actually being answerable because its body isn't really the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I might be overcompensating, but it is a four mana unit with two HP, and that's not exactly the hardest thing to deal with. And if you do have yeah, and that that was actually one. I actually talked with Frank Tasco on the design a little bit, and I advocated for for the. Uh, we were talking between a three two and a two three body, and I was like, make it a three two, but give it agile or something so it could be spooky. But yeah, yeah, it, it's pushed, but it, it's answerable, and it's got the variance thing in play. Yeah, I mean, if you do have an answer, oh. what? Sorry, if you do have an answer, it is a really big tempo swing in your favor, typically, because that's you can answer that with one or two mana, and now mm -hmm. you're just up two mana. So, I mean, it it is answerable. It's yeah. just if you don't have that answer, oof. <laughs> yeah. Empty, you got any closing notes? Uh, I, I can't say I'm a fan. I, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like must remove cards that much, uh, especially one that like is this bad if you can't remove it. Like, uh, I guess in KM you could like scout something, but that seems like desperate times. Like, uh, if you're relying on that, I think you're basically screwed like 80% of the time at least. Yeah. Okay. Although I will say it, that that card is. Extremely. I mean, KM can duel it with red units. It's it's specifically well, Bullock. I mean, well, Vigor Mod didn't exist. Bullock would be the ones that would have a huge trouble with that card because they both struggle with hitting flying and their board yes. is full of 1-1 one, one tokens. It's like, That's oh, true. enjoy drawing 1-1 one, one tokens for the rest of the match. <laughs> okay, the yes, Crimson Gunner. <laughs> the Crimson Gunner is a two-drop strength 1-3 vampire from Mort Stahl, and it's got a gun, folks. Uh, regenerate, deal this unit's attack to your opponent and an ally unit. Now, when I put this one on the pick list, I misread the card, and I didn't see that this is one of those self-damage cards where you're trying to hit one of your own dudes and sack him. Now that I have read it, uh, I, I was like, okay, well, am I going to leave this on my pick list? Yeah, this is interesting and probably gives Grief something he wants to talk about. Grief, is this something you want to talk about? Not really. Really? Not really good, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, okay. the, the the most corner case you want to use this on is a ragers. So you hit it one one damage, but you still have better versions like Nightshift Merchant and other self pinger cards. And the other corner case would be Guardian of the Abyss, but you have to probably put a lot of attack on it to burn the same damage that you're dealing to the Guardian of, uh, of the Abyss to both players. All in all, cute design, but... Eh? <laughs> um, if you do have a lot... If you do want to use this, uh, one thing I thought of for this is you can have this be your dedicated glowstone miner and have that be his job as he just mines glowstones. Um, and then if you want to have a little bit more fun with this... You could throw a uh, fake fangs on this and then gain six uh, life each turn and mine glowstones with it. That's a thought, maybe. But is that it, it? Is that good enough? If you can give this attack buffs, this could be decent. But on its own, 
like without any support, it's pretty weak. Hmm. Even as it just a, but yeah, I, I, I am agreeing that with that word ally there, it doesn't have a lot of flexibility besides maybe glowstone might or rage. Actually, well, it only hits your units. Yeah. Well, it, it, I don't. I don't think the hitting your units is that bad because it can be used to trigger rage. It can be, but and if you don't have anything good, you can just have it hit itself since it has regenerate. Yeah, but your. That's actually a exhausting. problem, though. You're exhausting it to just hit itself. Well, it, it, it hits damage the, to the opponent too. Yeah, it, it hits yeah. the opponent's face as well. Yeah, so that's, that's why I was saying, true. if you put like, if you put like for a stranger side example, vampire fangs, this now it will. Uh, oh, it also deals it to your cell. Oh, yeah. I, oh. so you can't have it go to three. <laughs> yeah. Really. That's the problem with it. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. It only if it only dealt one damage to an ally, that would be okay, but ooh, not its full attack. Uh, no. Are there any jank OTKs you can do with this by pumping it to like 25 attack and then having it shoot the face? As I said, the, basically the only corner case would probably be Guardian of the Abyss. Yeah. What about Absolute Edge? I mean, that could okay. be. <laughs> okay. Just give, okay, play, play play this? Just give you I mean, evasion. Strength with... can get evasion via flying, via other stuff. No, that's fair. And With the, any know, equipment a, what? that gives uh, an even attack and health boost, it can always hit itself and it will always live as long as the boost oh, is even fair. to both sides. Yeah. So with like an absolute edge, let's say if you did it for like five mana, this would be a, uh, a five whatever, and then you could deal five damage to your opponent every turn with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's okay. not terrible. Um... So, uh, Sunday jank with grief with magic and uh, magical collective card game Wonderland. <laughs> this with five attack or yeah, let, let it have five or six attack. Um, Guardian of the Abyss and Blood Priest. Ooh. You hit this. You hit Guardian of the Abyss with six damage. With this, so Guardian of the Abyss shoots your opponent six damage. This shoots six damage, and six damage hit your face due to Guardian of the Abyss. Now Blood Priest triggers and si deals six damage to face. <laughs> <laughs> You've done eighteen damage. <laughs> now, so have any of them have stuff like Life Bond? Okay. I, I really do want more uh, support cards for a rage deck. That's something I've wanted to be yeah. like a thing for a while, but it really isn't. Yeah. Okay. Argent Eye. Argent Eye is a one drop neutral <laughs> artifact from HPL. And give a unit at the end of turn, scour two. Or start a turn, sorry. Um. ET dubs, part of the reason I picked this, for those of you who don't know, Taco Danger is the HPL admin and is notorious for going around on the Reddit and uh, actually giving a lot of feedback on people's cards. But I've heard some people jokingly say, oh, the second Taco Danger touches my card, it gets, it get, it gets uh, nerfed in the voting. Uh, so I wanted to turn a critical eye toward Taco Danger's cards because they don't post a lot. Um, this effect is interesting because it's like, it's an equipment, basically. It's not an equipment, but it's basically an equipment that lets you uh, do a whole ton of scour. So am I running this in dragons or is this, this is potentially good? I don't know what to make of this. Empty, what do I make of this? I don't know what you run this in. Like, I, I feel like the scenario that will happen a lot is you put this on your unit and then they kill it and you get nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you got two for one scrub. <laughs> yeah. And it, it I... doesn't help protect the unit at all. Do you think it should be like an equipment artifact equipment and give like ward or something? I think I think most of the time you just run that dragon totem over this. <laughs> yeah, because the dragon totem yeah. is a body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Though, is there any potential synergy with it being an artifact? I know people have been trying to push artifact synergy. 
I, mean, I have one waiting in the wings. I haven't been able to design. Not yet. One. I've been no. seeing a few pop up on Reddit at least. Yeah. Um. Any uses for this? It is an action. So clearly, peer. No. <laughs> one of the two card types. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess if you, I mean, if you want to, oh, that was about to say the stupidest thing ever. I guess if Action Spanbrick wants to scour with, and they want to add units to their deck, they could add that. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait, does, does Eagle Listness want this? No. No. I okay. actually wanted but, but, to talk about it because you could actually play box card at Scour more, or you can just play Scouring or. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. So you the unit has to live for two turns. To for this be to be a scouring orb. There is actually a unit that scours at the beginning of each turn, by the way, that is colorless. <laughs> well, this could have an edge over scouring orb if you're running a deck that needs to scour like every turn, like some sort of check the top of card of your deck type thing, but even then you'd still run the dragon We, over we have that, and I think yeah. it's a three cost three three. So maybe if you're running <laughs> Some sort of like tank combo up. build, and you're running a bunch of war units, and you're maybe Highlander and trying to do X marks to spot shenanigans. <laughs> you're I mean, honestly, a lot of interesting arguments for that card. Honestly, <laughs> if this costed zero, I think it would be okay. Or cantrip. It's, it still wouldn't see a ton of play, but I think if it costed zero, it could be at least usable. But one mana is just, there's better options. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think if it, if it can tripped, it could have maybe worked out. As is, it was just interesting. It's in the interesting. Box section now. Okay. Put a stamp <laughs> yeah. on this card and back to sender. <laughs> hey, Grief has a special treat for you guys. He picked... Three cards with the same designer from the same realm for the same archetype, and it's an archetype he hates. So, yes, with a passion. <laughs> the Voxian Chord is a three-drop neutral action from HPL with your Vox gains plus one, plus one, then destroy a unit with less attack than your Vox. For our newer viewers, uh, Vox is this big scary thing with uh, drop two eight. Discard all other copies of it in your handed deck. Deal damage uh, equal to this unit's attacks to all enemies. Gain HP equal to this unit's HP. So every Vox card that goes in your deck makes this thing bigger. When it gets bigger, it does this big, great big splashy thing, ideally. It starts as a 2 8, but doesn't end there. So, Grief, what did you want to say about this card? Okay, starting, first of all, people, please. Understand, you don't need Vox in a Vox deck because every Vox card actually operates on the specific backend functions that they don't need Vox. How that will work out later down the line with bind and banish zone split is another question of the day, but that's not a question that we want to ask today. Um, to the point where I absolutely despise Vox cards, all those three Vox cards that we're talking about are cards that I actually like. Um, <laughs> To this, it's first of all the first action that can interact with Vox cards. On top of that, it's a good removal spell for that. It's decent for uh, it's decent for Eagleus. It provides you uh, provides a good reasoning to run even the more subpar Vox cards because they can trigger off of that uh, of that card. And even for three uh, for three mana, this is basically a fireball for three mana. And gets better over time the uh, more multiple cards of the Vox package you're playing. This actually gives you the reason to not splash Vox cards somewhere because they are partially reasonable and Vox is a semi-mediocre quote-unquote late game bomb that may or may not get off. Um, this gives you a reasoning, okay now I can actually handle my board and even in Magical Christmas Wonderland can pl uh, play my Vox because I uh, went to turn 12 or 13 to drop it finally and hold on to that uh, to that point so every box card that we're looking at has to be seen in context basically on how it best supports the rest of the shell so do you believe that if this and the other two you're about to talk about all got in that vox would now be a, a deck yeah and funny enough it would be better without vox okay <laughs> empty you have anything to say on this I, I think it's a problem that, like, 
we are very quickly getting to the point where Vox decks don't run Vox anymore. They're just support cards. I think Vox either needs like a mana cost reduction buff or maybe some Vox support could come along that reduces your Vox's cost so that you could get Vox out early. But like I've seen, I've played around with Vox decks quite a bit and I've seen other people playing with them. Uh, and Vox is just too slow right now, really. Like by the time you are hitting 13 mana, you're going to be dead. Like, it's not going to happen any other way. Okay. Super, what do you have to say about this? Because I don't have a lot to say about this. I'm actually impressed of just like if these cards get in of how good of of Vox is heading towards the actually being a legitimate mid-range type deck because all of these Vox cards are really good at pressuring tempo. They don't pressure life, they don't pressure card advantage necessarily, but oh man, are they tempo nightmares. Uh, I, that pun was not intended, but, <laughs> but I, I really do want a mid-range deck. and it, it, I am excited to see the possibility of a Vox mid-range deck. The only thing it's just it would be interesting if maybe i mean this is a bit off topic but having to run vox in your deck sucks maybe having like in the future of a card design a one drop that adds a vox to your hand like herald of vox or something that would probably be a better way to actually have vox in your deck than having to have a 13 mana boulder fall or something <laughs> yeah yeah vox is basically a relic of the past where legendary cards had to be gimped to some extent to make them look more legendary even though they were just made bad um <laughs> yeah. okie dokie then so the voxian hymnal is a four drop neutral uh nothing in particular that should have been an artifact from hpl so it's just an action choose twice your vox gets plus two plus two uh, or deal damage to a unit equal to your Vox's attack, or create an Echo of Vox. Echo of Voxes are affected by your Vox based stat increases. Um, yeah. So this is fun. Uh, let me open everyone back up there. Oop. Um, so, Grief, what is this one in particular giving the archetype that it needed? So, we talked about the other one gives it a flexible removal spell. This gives it actually fl uh, flexibility in general due to the fact that it is a command where each mode can be chosen twice or just one, uh, one of the, uh, one of uh, one out, uh, two out of three. Um, why is it so good? Because it A can carry you with uh, the mileage of or the stat increase or stat, of, uh, stat increase meta vox support cards, basically make your echo of voxes that are also main deckable better and other cards that work off of the uh, stat increases offer you can actually get the box uh, um, the echoes of box into the board to allow you to get a more board presence since usually mm, box cards uh, box cards don't really do a good job at piling on on the board they are good units that are one of triggers most of the time because they're summons, but not marginally good attackers. This actually gives you a board, and um, since all those uh, stat increases accumulate over time, you can actually play this and put two six sixes or um, seven sevens on the board for four mana. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, they also work quite well if you put an obsidian giant into the board to give you even more mid range uh, units that they have to deal with. Or outright uh, give them another flexible removal card. So this is actually is something that can carry, uh, can carry your box deck depending on the board state or basically the flow of the game. Okay. MT, you have anything to say on this one? Mm, not too much. Yeah, this is definitely the card that scares me the most. Like, in a Vox deck, this is always going to generate way more than four mana's worth of value. But it's also, I mean, on its own, it, it's like this would, be, this would be decent at three mana, but not at four if you're just playing it by itself. So, I mean, this is sort of why I'm, this is the one that kind of makes me excited for Tempo, because being able just to create like two 
four fours or five fives for four mana is a really strong tempo play on turn four or just being able to put one in play and then deal and then just like kill a unit really strong plays but yeah there's just a lot of strong stuff you can do with this card in a vox deck hmm. but yeah chaining these together can get really potentially scary oh yeah okay now, Grief's third pick, the same designer and the same archetype and the same, uh, oh. oh, come on, Reddit, go Reddit. The Voxian Templar is a six drop neutral 4-4 four, four cultist horror from HPL with summon, create a cleft foot steed with stats and cost equal to your Vox's attack. Your Vox gets plus one, plus one. What is the cleft foot steed? It is a 2-2-2, two, 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 but that's going to change in a minute. Uh, with your Voxian Templars are untargetable. So when you summon this, you get a thing that gives you the best of your Vox's abilities so far, or your Vox's attack. In a square statted unit, this in turn protects the 4-4 parent. So let's talk about this. Let's pretend you're running a Vox deck. Let's pretend on turn four, you got the hymnal that also got in. And let's say you're really, really fond of just stats. So you pick the first mode twice, and you got your boxes attached to six. So you play this thing, you get a six six for, or you get a free six six, that, uh, and a four four that's untargetable. So that's 20 stat points on a six drop. That's pretty crazy. What? <laughs> if, you get, if you chain him on this, you get 20 stat points on a six drop. And you pick the, the attack mode both times. Or you can pick a different mode. I'm just saying. This is, can potentially get really, really crazy. Yeah, I mean, me yeah, if, if you're playing in a Vox deck and you're doing Vox stuff up to turn six, <laughs> this is basically just supposed to be at the end of the game. It's just basically, oh, yep, now have fun with my giant, like, seven, seven, and four, four with untargetable oh, for six mana. <laughs> it's just good tempo push. The one thing I don't like, though, is I would have this would have been so much better if that would if it gave the Templars Ward instead of Untargetable, because otherwise this just curves right into Earthquake and Earthquakes kills both pretty easily, probably. Yeah, it's a lot to answer potentially, though. I don't know. Grief, tell me about this. Well, then again, do we really want to make this kind of actual win con that is better than Vox? Uh non-interactive since you have to basically the thing is though they are untargetable as long as those big beefy stat sticks the uh, moment that they're dropping to uh, on the board are actually on the board and each of them has to be get rid of uh, one by one to actually finally get to those uh, lord effects which i like this is a fucking vox lord mm -hmm. for three different units the clefford the echo and another one that basically I think was also reducing some uh, stats from Vox. So all in all, with all the, with this entire package, we finally have a card or a mid-range Vox deck that basically says, "Okay, Vox, you you were you were our uh, you were our progenitor, but old man, take a chair." It's for a younger generation to decide the future. And this is basically the kind of box deck future that I want to see. A fucking deck that actually does something and is not such a throwaway shell on an Egolus deck. Now, put this entire shell into an Egolus deck and gain, uh, gain uh, even faster, uh, gain even faster level twos. You now have an actual, I uh, now actually have a good game plan that you don't have to sit the entire game through. So this becomes the win con at this point. Vox this is, is no longer your win con. This is now the win con. Because now your entire board basically is, funny enough, working in tandem like an uh, Lord Merme uh, Merfolk deck in a modern. Yeah. Where each and every um, uh, where each and every Merfolk Lord adds something to the entire board. And now on turn six, you probably look down board for three to five different five five plus units yeah. yeah i mean they just basically they're just they the instruments just add to the orchestra and they just all sing the hymn of vox together in unity and wreck your opponent yeah, yeah. 
MT, you got anything on, on this? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like the direction as quite as much as Reef does. <laughs> I, I, mean, the, I, I absolutely yeah. hate Vox because design-wise, she's completely unneeded. She's a board wipe on turn to, uh, on turn thirteen that basically says, "Okay, you haven't killed me now. Now I basically wrecked the entire board." And let's see what you can actually do. No, nothing. Sorry, you should have won faster. Oh, you couldn't because I had an extremely hard control deck that happens to run a colorless board wipe on a stick. Like I do have this. <laughs> I do have to say, out of the three Vox cards, this is probably the weakest of the three. It's and I funny think enough the weakest. And I think this is, I mean, it's decent in Vox, but I think it still might just be too slow and too easily answerable. Like for six mana, you want it to be able to do something and not die to Earthquake. I, I mean, that's just sort of the thing I'm concerned about. It's just this curves right into Earthquake and then you just, it goes away on turn seven. And even if it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's a big dude on turn six. Get, it just gets chump blocked. It doesn't have overrun or anything like that. I mean, it's if they don't have removal, sure, but it, it, it's going to be get you a plus one in card advantage, but I don't see a six drop that gives you a four four and a big dude being that impactful. Not even an egoless promo. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe in Mr. Ramp himself. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Then, then, that this is, well, if this was five, that would be a lot better, but six is kind of hard in the Eagle is Pearl Ma. It, it would probably come out on four at best. But at, by turn four, how many Voxes have you actually played to make your Clef Footstead big enough? You have the Scouring dude, you have the Removal dude, you have the other units that uh, you have the other units that basically count towards uh, counter stats towards Vox. You have the Obsidian Giant that basically can be played off of the stats you've gained before. So you can actually chain a lot of units back to back. Well, uh, yeah, you do, but I mean, if you're going to cheat this out on turn four in Pearl Maw, you only have about four mana to work with before then. Like, it's just how many can you possibly play before you cheat this on four in Pearl Maw? And it's not that many. I mean, it's not that bad to, for, to cheat out two four fours for six. That's a decent trade, actually. And you would have a little bit of time to do some board wreckage before they actually could answer that. But it just seems just outside of on curve, it just seems pretty weak outside of on curve, at least. Yeah. Anyways, let's go actually to a DC card. So the DC or the DC this time was the underdog DC. If you are in a worse position somehow, this card gets better is the idea. So Ragukai the Storm is a six drop mine two four dragon god from Yamato. Flying summon if your opponent has more HP than you, this deals three damage to all other units without flying. And when this attacks, deal two damage to the opponent two times. So this is trying to reinvigorate Ash Gertie. Ash Gertie has always been, or recently, uh, because of the rise of Rick, has been in a rough spot, right? Everyone's running Rick, right? Who's well, running? it's... it's. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's not it's, completely due to the rise of Rick. It's a lot of a lot of it's due to KM, and the exact same problem exists here. KM drops this on turn four as a three mana board wipe, but leaves a two four behind. It's like, oh. <laughs> well, the board wipe effect only works if your opponent has more HP than you. Which, if you're playing any control deck, they always do. <laughs> well, yeah. Um. So this was your pick, Empty. I want to know why you picked this one. Um, it's an interesting design. It's sort of trying to like bridge the gap between like being a control card and an aggro card because like the the damage ability is obviously meant to synergize with Ashgurdy because it just procs your passive on its own. But then the playability is sort of um, like it's more of a control effect. So it's like decent in both matchups because it can threaten damage and then against aggro by the time you drop this you're definitely going to have less hp than them and then it can like help you wipe the board it's interesting in like the mind flyers deck that 
sort yeah. of came into existence when uh, Sky Totem got in. Yeah, so so the, so the flying deck that's being built out by like Frankastico, this could potentially build it out a little bit more. Um, give Ash Gertie a place that's specifically Ash Gertie's, but then again, Cam could just take that place. Um, Grief, what do you have to say about this? I'm actually kind of confused if you want to really play this in Ash Gertie. Sure, you could potentially ramp into it in Ash Gertie, but isn't this better suited for KM? or big trick because they actually have the control shells to allow you to usually use it as a board wipe on the stick with an actual win con attached to it or potential win con. It's basically a mid-range card, mid-range to control card. The one place this would be really good in Ash Gertie as is um, if you're running a flyer aggressive deck versus another ground-based aggressive deck because the ground-based deck will be faster but they're going to run right into a one-sided board wipe. <laughs> and yeah. you'll just pretty much win the game on the spot there. But, I mean, even outside of this, I'm just, I'm just scared of the six-mana three-damage three board wipe with a body. <laughs> it's just like, Aggro's had enough time recently, and it's starting to peek its head, head out of the hole, and then here comes this giant dragon to stomp it right back in. <laughs> I mean, do you know what this card supports the most, funny enough? This is a legacy card support for a legacy deck, and that's blue dragons or mind flyers, because mind fish and flyers are funny enough kind of interesting as a dragon fish deck in legacy that runs anti flying, anti fish board wipes, has dragon's breath, and can actually make this damage, uh, um, uh, make uh, synergies with stuff like uh, crushing waves and so on and so forth. So this is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> that deck in particular. This may be a pretty good lord in the future because I know there's definitely been pushes to develop more of an, a mind flying aggro yeah. archetype like Sky Totem. I know that Pegasus didn't make it, I don't think, but there's been definitely pushes for low drops that do flying and this this synergizes extremely well with that deck type. It this This answers that one deck type's biggest weakness and that's aggro decks with a faster clock because this will just wipe that board then. But this is still threatening and control because now you're dealing with they just dropped a six mana, basically six four that's gonna get you five EXP every turn as Ash. It's removable, but if they if they already have a board, it that's it can be a, it can be tempo pressure, but it's definitely its strongest when you have higher HP and you're going against units. Yeah. It's not as strong versus a control deck. And good luck on uh, yeah, getting the legendary. The Amethyst Refiner is a two drop strength two three dwarf from Vanarad with active lose one max mana gain one mana. Uh, so let me guess what Empty's going to talk about with this and why Empty picked this. Empty picked this because currently dwarfs don't have a way to gain a lot of mana, and this gives it a chance to, like, or sorry, uh, they don't have a means to lose the mana they need to proc their abilities, and this gives it a way to do that that also ramps a little bit. And that's what yes. this they They need it so bad. Please give them anything. I, I tried multiple times to get Bloodsmith in so they would have something to make them reliably lose max mana. Please, just give them one card. Okay, I don't know. Is that all you have to say about it? <laughs> uh, pretty you're pretty much. <laughs> they need it. Okay, Super, what do you have to say about this card? I would have preferred this effect on a one mana unit. Having to remove, like, dwarves are more of an aggro tempo archetype, but I mean, normally it's just, it's just going to be attacking face, but on the turn you want to do something big. Removing a two drop from combat that turn is a pretty big cost for an effect that's technically not even a net positive. It's kind of both. But I mean, I mean, this is, this is nice of that. This is basically a two mana, two, three with a little bit of late game value on that mm -hmm. when it becomes less valuable in combat, you can then just tap it for mana at the end of the game. The lose one mana clearly doesn't matter as much at the end of the game, but the gain one mana can help you, but then also it's just, but the thing is, if you're using this for, like, Curse Guard Captain, which you want to, you know, lose mana so your things become cheaper, and you typically want to do that around three or four, 
tapping your two drop is an expensive cost at that point in the game. And this is sort of why I think it, this would have been better on a one drop with a, an adjusted stat line. Yeah, I personally just don't like this archetype and I haven't really been following it, so I don't have much to say on it. Grief, do you have anything to say about it? Voters, in-game on to end this subreddit. Please, press that upvote button so that, this, so that this haggard bloke of a black dwarf can finally, can, spend, <laughs> can finally spend his max mana to support his family. <laughs> King... <laughs> King Keswick approves of this. <laughs> Who else is going to support their family's drinking habits? I hope that joke I did was not lost on you being from. <laughs> okay. Also, I'll send you the video later. Um, uh, okay. Spend them up both to spend Max Mana. Okay. <laughs> But but if but if you upvote it, does that mean you lose one max down downvote later? Okay, the spirit oh, breaker is a small print. Is a <laughs> tree drop spirit, uh, three three spectre from Mortstall, realm of the dead things. As well, summon banish up three cards in your graveyard. An ally gains e HP equal to the number of cards banished. So I like this because I, I love effects like banish up to three cards from your graveyard. But that is a lot of text on not a lot of effect um, because the text crunch. This would be our rare. I can see why. Actually, it's doing pretty well. Um, MT, why did you want to talk about this card in particular? I didn't choose this. Super, why did you want to talk about this card? <laughs> this is actually a really well-designed aggro card, I think. Like, if you can build around this, it is extremely powerful. If you don't build around it, at best, this is going to be on three, a 3-3 three, three with Agile, which is already pretty decent. But then it also has late game value once the graveyard fills up. It'll be that 3-3 three, three with Agile that also gives something 3 HP. But if you can manage that perfect deck balancing to where on turn three you actually have units in your graveyard, you're now putting out nine stat points worth of stats for three mana with an agile. And not only that, it's giving stat points at the most important time and the most important stat. HP right before a lightning surge. So if you balance this right, like, it would be hard, and, but I mean, with overflowing thoughts, it's probably going to be easier, though, of course, if those don't curve, but if you can balance this right, you get a 3-3 Agile, but then you can also buff your weakest thing to go above the HP threshold of removal to where they'll have to hard remove it, because, like, even a 1 HP then goes to 4 HP, and it survives a board wipe, it survives burn, it's just, if you can build around this deck right, it's a really good reward for an aggro deck. Okay, what I like about this is we have three spirit heroes. One of them revives a bunch of random stuff and wants his graveyard clear. One of the, uh, them cares a lot about the top of her graveyard at that particular instant, needs a way to peel cards off of it. And the third one needs a way to give things HP. And this has something for everybody. I do, however, wish, because I'm more of the first two inclinations, I like reanimating stuff, that if you're going to make this a rare, that you make that a permanent buff. Personal opinion. Because um, it's already got all the text box anyway, why not give it that little extra oomph? Well, even if it's not permanent, you can put this something on like a Stickomancer where you just don't want it to die, period. Yeah. And then now you have a 1-4 Stickomancer <laughs> that's buffing all your stuff coming back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It is, it's really good. It's really balanced and really interesting. I like how it has a role for all three heroes. And it, it's also a really interesting picture from uh, Horn God there. I don't know what that is. That looks like it looks, okay. it looks like King DDD's jet-powered hammer. It does look like it King DDD's jet-powered hammer. <laughs> Grief, talk to me. Um, you know this shy guy 
actually <laughs> is a baleful proc on a stick because it's an ally. That means you as a player are also counted. It is a life gain. That's Wait, we're, oh, really? <laughs> scroll down for a second. Let me see that. No, no, it's, 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 it's right. A, An it's a, a, it counts, a, it counts allies, so this can also count itself. Uh, can it that can it count itself on a summon, though? Because would the summon still be in the resolving, kind of in the resolving um, zone? True, true. It was I'm entrance, it definitely. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. No, this is a banish, meaning that... Um, you probably the thing is we don't know if it is a target effect or a choose effect but i probably guess it is a tar it is a choose effect wait no you cannot choose players so it is a target effect so you have it's to, a target yeah so it cannot okay. choose itself okay um first of all it can hit, hit your uh, hit your own face meaning that yes it procs baleful oh man <laughs> This is actually a tool for the life gain deck that I talked about last week when we talked about the spire, budding spire, that fits less into a plant deck and more into a life gain deck. Okay. And also and that specter synergy is nice too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that you can discard, I mean, you're not probably going to do it, but you can discard this for spook blast. Like I do like seeing more good specters, so spook blast becomes more and more playable. Could you yeah. scroll down just one second again? In your graveyard, okay. So it can hit any uh, card, <laughs> any card. So yep. it's not just units, so you can actually banish your own actions. But in practice, if you're Baluka Marie, you probably want to get rid of some chaff. I mean, if you have a mass of many men in your graveyard, that's going to be the first thing to go. <coughs> Empty, what do, you, do you have any closing thoughts on this? Yeah, I like it. It's very versatile. Uh, like having this card that can like bridge the bit gap between all three spirit heroes and also be like a plant card is neat. Mm -hmm. If only could target your opponent's graveyard, we'd actually have an answer to Vigorous Maw, but that'd be pushing it for this card a bit. <laughs> It'd be very strong if you could hit your opponent's graveyard. <laughs> well, we have Journey of the Dead. Well, yeah, but that doesn't come on a 3 3 with Agile. <laughs> <laughs> I see great. All right, as I said, it is answer. Rock Lobster, I mean Lobber. Rock Lobber is a two drop neutral 3 2 dinosaur from Unguia with Leap and Summon. Create a massive boulder on top of each deck. I'm not drunk enough for this card. <laughs> no. Who cares about this? Mafuda cares about this. That's a legacy card, isn't it? Or what's the one that, that mills the top three of your deck and. That's a legacy card. Yeah. And something, something, the average cost of the cards or something. That's a legacy card. Well, yeah, but we can talk about <laughs> the cards rolling legacy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, you mean you don't like the combo of dropping three of these and then milling the top three from your deck to deal 20 damage? Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll let we... you guys talk before that. I'll let you guys talk before that. Why I hate and love this card. Okay, and <laughs> I, I've been letting you do closing remarks for most of these, so you get to go first now. Okay, if we want to talk about the uh, Budding Spire support, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you play at the peace Tom on the boulder. Combo. Oh. And then your budding spire dies, and you deal twenty-five damage. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is so hilarious. This is stupid, but hilarious. But it's stupid and hilarious. I mean, honestly, one of the most powerful things is this. This is a draw seal. Like, if you're in a position where you're about to win the game as an aggro deck, and your only out is to draw the top of their deck, they're drawing a massive boulder now. <laughs> So, okay, this is, by the way, this is an interesting design suit I thought about playing around with. It, it's, it's potentially neat. I don't know, maybe. Um, I actually, I mean, I just like the card. It's a good card. It's, it, it's, it's, one of the nice things it does is this actually reduces uh, a concept I talked about called game complexity in that it denies both players a draw, which is a lot more impactful against a control deck than as an aggro deck typically in the early game because the control deck is looking for answers and a massive boulder is not an answer <laughs> later in the game it's going to bite you in the rear but once again later in the game if you're in a position to win the game you can just deny their chance at drawing an out 
But so like this is are running stuff like altered memory and stuff and mat- meticulous research. Well, I well, trust me as an aggro player. If your opponent's response to your board is playing a meticulous research, you're always happy. You know who's digging for any answer draw and has no. That's the saying, like saying divination. I mean divination. You know, well, I mean even, even, even then, if he was digging with meticulous research, he now only got one card instead yeah. of two for three mana. It's just it reduces your opponent's chance okay. at drawing answers, basically. And it's always a good thing to do. As and an it's on player. a decently sized body, too. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's a viable two drop. And you're pr- you'll probably have a decent enough curve from your mulligan, and you'll just reduce the, imp- the number of opponent's cards searching for an answer by one. And it, it, I mean, that is pretty impactful. Like I said, it's an interesting card, even just as a two drop without combo jank because just because of the fact that it, it denies both players their draw next turn basically yeah okay so, so you, you got anything else to say or we're we gonna close out um i hate and love this card because as son uh, super son already mentioned it is probably a draw lock problem is though i personally think it should have been a tree tree because funny enough yeah of course you're fucking dr- um draw locking your opponent but you're fucking draw locking yourself Especially regardless of what deck you are. You're getting a damn boulder. On top of that, leaf is a non-keyword. It is nearly less worth than a half a point of mana. The, <laughs> the, uh, the corner cases where leaf actually is doing stuff, it's not on bodies that actually need it. <laughs> yeah, 3-3 three, three would have been really nice. This, but... <laughs> this is a, this is a, the funny is this is an aggro unit with a defensive keyword. Why? <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, but on top of that, gaining boulders usually is only u- uh, utilized in two uh, in two instances. First of all, you don't care about a boulder. Second of all, it is part of your fucking win con. It was with Mafuda. That's why Mafuda was nerfed because it killed you just when you had one fucking boulder. This works with budding spire. Funny enough, sure, the combo is a little bit convoluted and stuff, but it's still there. <laughs> Next, this card is neutral. It slots into any Drylock deck. Second of all, if he ever gets any... Uh, third of all, if you ever get any damn Drylock ability like the um, painter or artist that was once on the subreddit, oh yeah, now you're locking them for multiple turns. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is, if you're building it like, if you're building like a mind aggressive deck, you deny your draw. But if you're running stuff like Magic Dave and Matchstick, all you really did was just draw another fireball. You just drew a fireball instead. True. Yeah. If your opponent doesn't have a way to make use of the boulder, and you do, you're exactly. effectively denying their draw while not denying yourself anything. Yeah, it's exactly. basically then a three. It's a two mana three two draw card, and that is strong. <laughs> The thing is, though, will people complain about it? Probably. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop the share. Um, that was interesting. There's a lot of weird, interesting things going on on the subreddit right now, and we will see what we have to talk about next week after whatever is done is done. Um, oh, probably so- all cards that started with zero votes. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, as always, to my faithful co-host, Grief. Oh, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and my uh, and uh, my regular panelist, Empty Folder. Thanks for having me. And thank you to Super for joining us. That was really fun and interesting having you on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it, it's I had you know three people monopolizing the discussion instead of two, which was really fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Everyone, just uh, remember, keep playing collective, execute your right to vote, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Remind me why I'm doing this, and bye. See ya.